All right, here we are. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our Mag Saturday Live broadcast. I'm Saya. I'll be hosting the project we're doing today, which is some really cute little textile moths. I don't know if you can, oh, you can't see the other screen right now, but you will in just a moment. Uh, so this is a textile project. So textiles uh, mean fabrics or any kind of kind of softer material when we're doing an art project. And what we're making today are, okay, I think you can see it now. These fun little moths. They're very, very cute. They fit in your hand really nice. And you've got a couple options on how you can make these. Uh, I'm going to do the more simple version for our demo today. Uh, so this is our simple moth. He's got no legs, just sits on the ground. Um, but towards the end, I will do a quick blurb about the slightly more complicated version you can make that has cute little fluffy moth legs and feet and some really gorgeous beading. Ooh, all right, I'm a little nervous because this is a few steps on this project. It's a little more complex, but you know, it's gonna go absolutely great. So let's jump in, let's get to it. So the first thing you're going to want to do uh, is gather your materials. I'm gonna put our finished products out of the way here for a moment. So you're going to need a needle and thread and you're going to want to thread your needle and then tie a little knot at the end. And then we'll just set that aside for now. You're going to need a glue stick, a sharpie, some nice colored cardstock, some super fuzzy chenille chenille. I think if you pronounce it the proper way, which is kind of French, it's chenille but I'm going to just be a real Anglophone here and call it chenille. So chenille pipe cleaner. <laughs> You're going to need a little pom-pom of your color choice. Some cotton balls. And you will need a piece of colored card stock. Uh, I've already got this cut out, but just imagine that it's a fresh wrangle, rectangle of cardstock. You are going to need a sheet of foam. I went with black, but you can choose whatever color you'd like. And a sheet of felt. All right, so let's get started. The first thing you're going to do, oh, right, ah, whoops. You're also going to need a plain piece of paper uh, I to make your template for your moth wings. I've already got it cut out just so that we uh, don't take too much time today. But your first step is simply going to be creating your wing template. So you're gonna, you know, grab your paper, you're gonna draw that, la -di da di da you're gonna snip, 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 cut it out, and then you'll have something like this. If you're not sure what moth wings look like, feel free to hop on Google and look for moths. Uh, you've got lots of different kinds. These guys are modeled after what's called a poodle moth, uh, which is just far too cute. I love them. They're like the puppies of the insect world and I love them. So we've got our wing template. So now I'm going to be tracing my wing template onto three, three, three different materials. So the first will be my colored cardstock, which I already have. I chose gray. Um, then the next material you're going to trace it onto will be your sheet of foam. So we're just gonna do that right now. I was very, very excited when we came up with this project because moths are probably my favorite insect. Uh, I love a good butterfly, but you know, they're just not as fuzzy as moths. Okay, 
my wings are going to be a little tinier because I chose a smaller piece of foam, so that's okay. Just going to edit that a little. Going to cut that foam out. Here is my first set of wings, and now I'm going to trace my next layer onto the felt sheet. So that's going to give us this really nice, fuzzy, fluffy moth texture. Now this is going to be the top layer of our moth, so it's going to be the one you see the most of. But after you're done tracing this, you're actually going to want to go and leave, I don't know, maybe a quarter to a half inch of space from the border of your main wings. kind of following the same lines that you traced. But your felt layer is actually just going to be a tiny bit smaller. So I'm going to cut that out. Oh, we have a question here. What kind of glue works best for the project? Uh, you can really use most types of glue, although I wouldn't necessarily recommend standard glue. I'm a big fan of... Oh, this is just standard glue. I know that Elmer's does have a type of purple glue that is extra strength and multi-surface. So if you're using a glue stick, I would recommend trying to find the multi-surface. Uh, but if you use white glue, that will work fine as well. Uh, hot glue should be okay. Pretty much any adhesive that you can get your hands on should do for this project. Okay, so I have my three, oh, whoops, let me get rid of that. I don't want a barcode on my moth. So I'm going to have three templates and I'm going to set my cardstock wings aside for now. I'm going to be adding those later, but I can go ahead and let's see. I'm going to make sure this fits in case I decide to trim it a little more. Uh, but no, I think this is a nice size. We're happy with this. And I'm going to just start rubbing a whole bunch of glue on the back of my felt sheet because I'm going to attach it to my foam. Uh, and you are going to want to make sure you use lots of glue if you are using a glue stick just so that it you know, has lots to cling to. And I'm even going to put a little on both sides just to make sure that we have a nice secure bond here. And there we are. Nice set of wings. Yeah, that feels like it's sticking really nicely. Gorgeous. Okay, 
So our next step then is going to be making the body and the head of our moth. Uh, so we've got this real satisfying, fuzzy pipe cleaner. And my little pom-pom friend here. So first for the body, I'm going to kind of lay down my components of the moth. Oh, his head is so tiny. That's okay. And figure out about where I need to cut my pipe cleaner right here. That's sufficient. And uh, you can glue this on. If you want to make it extra, extra sturdy, you can sew it on. But uh, not really necessary. I've made a couple of these and the glue seems to work just fine. Especially since it likes to grab all of the little fluffies we have here. I'm just going to glue those guys up a little bit too though. Because again, strong bond. I find that, I don't know if this is just me, but I do find that if you put a bit of glue on both surfaces, you just get a little better adhesion. Oh, we have a question. Where can I buy these fuzzy stuff? These fuzzy pipe cleaners? You can find them at Michael's and if you are... Uh, lucky, I think you can also find them at dollar stores. Um, I don't know if they would have them at kind of like local art and drafting stores, but uh, always worth trying. But yeah, Michael's or craft stores, probably your best bet for finding the fluffy pipe cleaners. All right, so I've got my little fluffy moth body in place here. And now what I want to do is make the little antennae which are my favorite part of the moth. Just so cute. See kind of how they measure up to the head. And I'm going to make sure I'm bending it in half. So we're going to have a kind of V shape going on here, if you can see that. I'm going to bend it in half. Snip, snip. Get that out of the way. And now I have these super gorgeous fluffy antennas, uh, but I sort of want to make them a little bit pointy like a moth antenna. So I'm just going to use my trusty scissors to kind of trim a little bit at an angle because I want them to have a little point. That's going to make them look real nice and moth-like. You can also get, I have seen you can get pipe cleaners that sort of have these little uh, shapes in them already, but I've had just a devil of a time trying to find them, so couldn't tell you where to get those. So we're making do with this fluffy stuff and just trimming it down to our purposes. That's the lovely thing about art, right, is if you can't find something, you can always just Go ahead and modify what you have, you know, get creative, do your best. <laughs> okay, so I think we're good on our little antennas. You can see how I've uh, pointed them a little bit. And now we're going to take our needle and thread that we set aside that we have tied a knot in the end of. And I'm going to, this might be a little hard to see, but I'm going to sort of open up the thread at the end and, ooh, my coworker's bringing in a cool ring light. <laughs> I'm going to attach the antennas so that the little knot is at the top of them and then I'm going to wrap my string around again and into itself so that I'm tying a knot at the base of the antennas. And I'm going to do that again just because I like things to be nice and secure. There we go. Now I'm going to take my pom pom and I'm just going to put this needle straight through it. Look at that! We have a tiny, whoops, 
<laughs> We've got a tiny moth head with cute little antennas. I love it so much. So I'm going to put a spot of glue down too, just to kind of keep things in place. We don't want our moth head to be wobbling around too much. And then I'm going to stick my needle right through that foam. And whoop. <laughs> that was that was really satisfying. And I can attach it a little bit more. I'm just going to loop it through. Ow! Try not to uh, poke yourself while you're doing that, because I just did that. It was not a good time. I should have picked a sharper needle. This one's got a bit of a blunt end, so uh, don't make my mistake. Pick yourself a nice sharp needle. If you are uh, young and doing this and, you know, don't have the greatest motor skills, get an adult to help you when you're working with sharps. Um, I am an adult and I still poke myself with needles when I am doing art projects all the time. Uh, so, you know, if your dexterity isn't great, don't feel bad asking a grown up for help. All right, so I've got a couple of knots tied just to secure the little moth head. I've got these little antennas that are just cute as all get out and I've got a mess from trimming them, but that's fine. So once you've got everything knotted on the bottom, you can just give your string a little snip. And then every time you're snipping the end of your thread, you're losing your knot. So tie another little knot in the end. Just bring it through that loop and then you're ready to start again. We're just gonna leave that off to the side once more. So our next step is pretty easy. We've got the shape of our moth here. He's looking mighty fine. And now we're going to take these fluffy little cotton balls and just start unraveling them. And you can kind of pull them apart a little. So you get some kind of wispy strips of cotton. And they'll be nice and fluffy. I have four cotton balls here. You may need less than that. You may find you need more. It's really up to you. I think two is, uh, two is probably, two to three are probably sufficient, but uh, always better to have extra supplies just in case you run out. All right, so these are looking good. Got a few unraveled pieces. I can unravel more if I need to. And we're just gonna load the edges of the wings up. So I am adding my glue just to the edges of the foam, uh, sorry, the felt, not the foam. You want a little bit of the foam to be showing at the end of this. Um, I can show you as a demonstration on this one. You can kind of see the outer edge and that's why we left uh, about a quarter to a half inch on the outside of the wings. Now I'm going to start gluing down my little fluffs. And again, I'm, I'm really throwing lots of glue down here. Oh, and I'm gonna kind of bridge this little gap too. You can always snip any excess. Oh, whoops, cut into his little moth body, but that's okay. He's not gonna care too much. <laughs> All right, getting these wings done. And definitely give them a good little finger push when you're putting them into the glue. Get as much of the cotton pushed down as you possibly can. Now we're going to do the other wing the same way. I think in this case, because I pulled lots of the cotton apart, that two cotton balls was enough. Just gradually putting it down there. 
and poke, 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 poke. Grab one of my short pieces to fill in that little gap and put this guy down to finish that out. I love working with textiles so much. A lot of my art that I do at home has uh, really taken a textile turn in the last few years. And there's something just really wonderfully satisfying with working with the texture and shape of uh, soft materials. Okay, so we have a fluffy moth well on our way to being done. And now what I want to do is make some slightly more colorful details. So we're going to be, I'm going to put our original moth here, for example. You can kind of see what stage I'm on here is we're going to be working with our colorful cardstock. So that's these sort of like eye shapes that we're using. So, but yeah, got the sizing there. That's a nice, this is a fun part. You're kind of drawing it on kind of make some fun, bold patterns. Kind of a line here. Nothing too detailed. Just a, a line in a circle, but it makes it look nice. It gets the job done. So I'm going to cut that out. Oh, right, actually, a um, handy and fun way to duplicate that is just uh, fold it. You can do that before you cut it, but I just, you know, didn't, so that's life. And then that way you can be cutting at the same time, you'll get symmetrical shapes, so we'll be matching on both sides. There we go. So here's our, ooh, actually, oh yeah, no, I'm going to put that in my bigger one. Kind of wish I'd made it bigger, but you know, whatever. Just rolling with it. And I'm going to fill in any little spots that don't have Sharpie where I want to have Sharpie. I'm going to repeat the same pattern. I'll do it on here. Nice big circle, line down the middle. Get a nice thick outer edge. So we have that really nice contrast between the black and the burgundy. Uh, and again, when you're making these moths, so I am really partial to, you know, colors like gray, black, burgundy, olive green. I really like earth tones, but you know, your moth can look however you want it to look. If you want a neon green with pink and blue moth, go for it. Have fun with it, right? It's your project. You do whatever you want. So I can glue these down now. And again, little little glue on the paper, little glue on to foam. Everybody's happy things are sticking where I want them to stick. Beautiful. And now I'm going to make another just little small set of details. This one I'm just going to do a straight circle. Just some little circles, a little dot in the middle for some visual interest. I might actually leave a little rim of red around these circles um, just to try it out because that's not a, that's not how I did the other ones. So first time for everything. Ah, 
Nice, yeah, why not? everywhere oh and my glue is running away from me and my fingers are full of glue and so everything is sticking to me this has become somewhat of an ordeal but that's okay that's just how art goes sometimes your hands get messy thankfully I'm mostly done with the glue at this point <laughs> all right so I've got my little details on there and now what I'm going to do is take my rusty sharpie and I'm going to start making lines starting kind of at the tip of my little details I've added and going to the edge of the wings to give them that little insect pattern look. You know, these almost sort of, once you get all the lines and designs in there, they kind of have a little Art Nouveau feel to them. Kind of got a bit of that Alphonse Mucha style. If you're not familiar with his art, it really is worth checking out. Very gorgeous stuff. Couple more lines. Okay, and so for all intents and purposes, if you want to stop here, you can do that and you will still have a very cute fluffy moth that can sit on your desk or something. But I am going to talk to you briefly about how to add some beading if you'd like to. I've got a couple of seed beads here, so I'll just do a very short demo. And so if you are doing this, uh, you can at this point, add your cardstock backing to just make it a little more sturdy. However, if you're going to add beads, you don't want to do that yet. You want to have your cardstock set aside. And you're going to want to grab your seed beads. Here's hoping that the needle I picked is uh, big enough for seed beads. Oh no! It's too big. Let me see what else I've got here. Hmm. Well, I've created a dilemma for myself. Look at that. All right, well, we'll do it without the beads. Gotta improvise, gotta be timely. So what you would be doing, I can use this moth as an example. Uh, you'll be looking for beads through which you can fit your needle. Uh, pony beads are really great. Uh, I've got some little round beads. So what you'd be doing is You'll start your stitch by not putting any beads on and just poking your needle up through where you want to start your line of beads. And then that way you've got your knot. Remember those good old knots we tied? Your knot will be on the back end of your moth. Ooh, maybe you want to double knot it because mine just came out. Here we go. Now I've got a big loop on the bottom, so that'll work. So yes, you'll poke it through the bottom, the back end, pull it up, and then you'll be sticking some beads onto the end of your needle. And you really only want to put maybe three to five beads in a row, uh, depending on how straight you want your lines to be. So you'll put your beads on and then poke it down through. Pretend I've got beads here. So your beads would line up along this line. You're back to the back end of your moth, and then you'll just put it right next to the stitch you just made and bring it back up. Add your beads down the string. Go a few steps more. Poke it on through, and then you'll just keep going all the way around your wing like that, sticking it down through the back every once in a while. You will 
tie off your string when you're finished beating your moth. So again, when you're if you're doing that, it's going to look something like this, where you have this line of beads, and hopefully I can kind of show you. You can see where this is one string of beads, this is a couple of strings before I poked it in, this is its own thing. And the reason then, uh, after we cut this, the reason you have the card stock backing is because when you're done beading, you're going to have all of these loose strings kind of hanging out on the back of your moth. And if you're doing a 3D, more 3D approach to this project where you're putting the little pipe cleaner legs on, uh, it's not going to look very good to have a bunch of stray strings hanging out there. That's not very pretty. Not aesthetic. So that's where our cardstock comes in, where we're going to add it to the back of our moths to cover up all those loose string pieces that we don't want to see. It's just kind of a finishing touch thing. It makes your project look kind of neat and tidy and a little more intentional. So there we go. No loose strings. Nobody will be any the wiser. If you want to add legs, it's very much a similar process to the antennae. You're just going to take your... Oh, you can see it here. Perfect. You're just going to take your pipe cleaner, kind of give it some little feet, bend it at the end, cut it, and then same thing with the string. You're going to tie it around the middle. And then again, this is, uh, you'll be doing it through the cardstock. So you'll put the cardstock on before the legs, punch it through that cardstock. Tie those legs on. Knot them nice and secure. Bring it back down around the body. Pull it back, tie it again. And then snip that string so we don't have any little hangy tails. And then you'll just repeat that. Uh, you can fold the legs wherever you want. I'm not going to put the back legs on this guy. But yeah, then the, you'll have the little poodle moth legs there. And you can, yeah, you can still see the big screen there. The little legs. Oh, all right, I feel like I was a little rambly. It's a, it's definitely a project that has quite a few steps to it. So this is a really good one if you want to uh, spend a little longer time on a project and just really zen out, take your time. It's, uh, it's very meditative once you get going with the beating too. It's one of those things where it takes a bit of time, but it's, it's nice time. You're just kind of like getting in a rhythm. All right, so that's our textile moth project, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in this lovely Tuesday. Uh, I'm gonna quickly show you what we'll do next week. We've got this gorgeous pastel, oh, whoops, it's upside down. <laughs> We've got this gorgeous pastel cityscape. That's kind of, looks like it's reflected in a puddle. So we will have the supply list, I believe on the museums, oh, also, supply list and instructions for this project as well should be available on the Museum and Galleries blog, uh, our Facebook posts. So give us a follow on all of our social media. We've got a Twitter, an Instagram, and a Facebook for the Deer Museum and Art Gallery. And yeah, check out our blog. <laughs> yeah, thank you for tuning in, everyone. Have a great day.